is not a contest or a competition. There are no winners or losers. It is about training and saving lives. I was killed on my first mission at Red Flag. I was mad and I had a long, lonely flight back to base to think about it. Commanders walk a very fine line. In order to save lives in real combat, they are forced to take very real risks in training. They are pushing the limits in a controlled environment. However, what I want to do is not talk about the ingress route. I, I want to talk about instead a near mid-air collision that we had up here in the EC West area. Chaco One Flight, you briefed us earlier today that you were going to maintain your route unless you deviated up here to the north, nobody knew about it because you failed to communicate your change in flight path. As a result of that, eight people nearly lost their lives today at Red Flag. Don't let it happen again. The range restrictions for today's sortie remain unchanged. EC East, West, the 70 series ranges, you're cleared supersonic. Down My fears of screwing up single-handedly were largely unfounded. We all made mistakes. And we knew we had to fix them if we wanted to get through the next two weeks. In modern warfare, these pilots will have the most to fear from the ground below. Surface-to-air missiles fired from every conceivable platform have proliferated by the millions worldwide. Here we have the SA-13, and this radar is the snapshot radar. Next to, on the other side, we have They call it the threat center. Equipped entirely with enemy weapons, it is based on the same principle used in science museums. If visitors can get their hands on the exhibits, it's a more effective learning experience. You have one that does the driving, you have a second one up at the top that operates a 90 millimeter gun. Pilots call it the petting zoo. Some guys got a big kick out of it and would go back and play around again and again. But I didn't see much value in it, at least at the time. Range of 49,000 feet and a horizontal range of about 69,000 feet. It fires 15 rounds per minute, each round weighing about 30. I don't think we appreciated the efforts of the intelligence people as much as we should have. It's not until much later when the missiles start flying around your ears and you think, I should have listened a little more when they were talking about this stuff. Now you have a, the gunner sitting in the front and the pilot behind him. The gunner is responsible for all the weapons. The only weapon that the pilot can control is the front gun. At 5 a.m. each day, they search for perhaps a single pebble blown overnight onto the runway by the desert wind. One tiny pebble that otherwise might get sucked into an aircraft's engine. It's quite possible for a crew to lose both their aircraft and their lives before even leaving the ground. miles an hour, under the radar, hugging the rocks, 
and at the same time, you're trying to outthink and outfly the enemy. You make a mistake down low, smack right into the rocks. That's what fighter pilots live for. Yes, sir. Those are ours. Are they getting some help from the north? Yes, sir. Seems like they're coming in from the north. Okay, we need to make sure you get that information in there quick. By the way, sir. Looks like he needs some help. Squadron of F-15 search enemy territory for potential targets. Tractor and his aggressors have an edge in these games. This is their playground. They have chased visiting pilots through these canyons for years. They make a formidable enemy. Sniper flight. Most kills wins. Let's go. The object is to get the enemy in front of you, while at the same time watching your backside. And then get as close as possible before being detected. has few options. He must lose ground quickly in order to get behind the aggressor. In the blink of an eye, the hunter becomes the hunted. became less about keeping individual scores and more and more about a successful overall mission. Shooting down the bad guys is extremely important, but it's just a small part of the greater objective. If the bombs don't hit their targets, none of us has accomplished our mission.
missions become more and more challenging as Red Flag progresses. Combat periods are extended in length and intensity, and exhausted pilots are often required to refuel their aircraft simply to make it back to base. Believe it or not, sometimes the toughest part of the mission is just getting there and back. Refueling is one of the most challenging skills to master. It can be a serious situation if you can't take on fuel. In real combat, if you run out of gas and have to eject, you risk being captured. Four one, stabilize ready. no margin for error. If a pilot takes too long connecting with the fuel boom, he or she may endanger the lives of pilots at the end of the line. Low-level flying is particularly hard on fighter aircraft. Engines suck in dust and even birds. Because squadrons are visiting from around the world, there are rarely spare aircraft in case of mechanical problems. Ground crews are put under intense pressure to keep their aircraft flying. Mechanics are well aware that a small error in the assembly of the engine could result in a fatal explosion, either on the test bed or in the air. There were stories that my grandfather told me as a kid that began to come back to me once I was a pilot. The machine gun that jammed. The gas tanks sitting in your lap waiting to blow up. The parachutes they didn't always have time to put on. I remember, he said they were more proud of the bullet holes in their aircraft than they were of their medals. They all wanted to shoot down the enemy. But I think my grandfather changed his views as he got older. He admired the young enemy pilots and their incredible bravery. I remember he spoke of them with respect. After 22 hours of hard work, an F-15's engine is readied for the next mission. At Red Flag, they seek to exceed the intensity of a combat environment, not just for the pilots, but for the mechanics and ground crews as well. It is difficult enough to turn out a perfect aircraft at the best of times. To do so in wartime, when brushed, exhausted, and under fire, is an